This end grinder costs 45 euros and this end grinder costs 250 euros. That's quite a big difference, right? And many of you might be thinking, why should I spend more money and buy an expensive grinder? What's the extra benefit that I get for more money? And it's a valid question that I will answer in this video. Hey guys, Alish from European Coffee Trip and in this video we will look at three coffee hand grinders in different price categories. We will compare Hario Smart G coffee mill that costs around 45 euros, Time More Chestnut Slim that costs around 100 euros and Commandante C40 Nitro Blade that costs around 250 euros. All of them are good options in its own price point, so our goal is not tell you what grinder is better, in this case the price answers that question nicely. Our goal is to evaluate what you are buying for more money. Ultimately, we want to find out how much better coffee will taste if you buy more expensive hand grinder. But we'll also look at the quality of material, burst, durability and overall grinding experience. Since we want to get a proper sensory evaluation, we invited our friend Tom Molassa, who is certified Q grader and Slovak Cup Tasters champion 2018. Easily, he is a person with the most developed palette in our country, so we are glad he could join us. Now, we need to mention that Comandante is a sponsor of European Coffee Trip, but they were not involved in this video and we didn't share with them before the release. Also, Hario provided us with a free sample of the grinder for a review. Let's look at the each grinder first to get a sense of material choice. Hario Smart G coffee mill's body and engine is made out of plastic. It has a set of ceramic burrs and stainless steel central axle. The rubber band can hold stainless steel handle with the plastic knob. Time More Chestnut Slim's body and container is made out of aluminium. Axle and handle is from stainless steel, handle's knob is wooden and the burrs are made from Martin City stainless steel. Commandante C40 Nitro Blaze body is made from stainless steel. Container is from a robust glass. Grinder's engine and lid is from written plastic. Crank is made from stainless steel and the knob is wooden. The cover of body is black coated in our case, but Commandante is famous for using a thin layer of real wood on its body. The burrs are made from patented high allied high nitrogen stainless steel. Now, you already see some of the differences and trade-offs between these hand grinders. Hario grinder is really lightweight and compact, but the axle is not in a fixed position. Burrs are moving and not perfectly matching each other. The crank easily slips during grinding. Let's listen how does it sound. Time or grinder is also relatively lightweight thanks to the aluminium body and container. All the parts connect well together, except the disturbing noise when screwing the button chamber. The surface pattern looks great and somehow luxurious. The axle is fixed and stainless steel burst seems to be well attached. It already feels like a grinder that can perform well and last for a while. How does it sound? Commandante grinder is a beast. It weighs almost three times more than Hario, which is a bad thing on one hand if you want to travel with it, but on the other hand, it tells you something about the material. It's built to last. All the parts nicely attach to each other, either by screwing or magnet. Axle is fixed and burrs match each other perfectly. You can recognize an attention to detail from small things like logo engraves, coating or woodwork. Let's listen to the grind sound. If you look at all burrs next to each other, they all have the same diameter, but Hario burrs are from ceramics, Time More burrs are from Martin Synthetic stainless steel, and Commandante burrs are from high alloy, high nitrogen stainless steel. In case of these three hand grinders, what you are buying for more money is high quality and durable material that should last longer. Also, higher priced grinders are more versatile, so they allow you to grind fine enough for espresso, for example. And what about the grinding experience and the taste? It's time to invite Tomo to test it together. We will use a special coffee roasted by Hard Beans in Poland. It's Panamian Geisha coffee produced by famous Savage Coffees. It's the lot called Iridescence. 
We brew with Plastic V60, a standard recipe of 18 grams of coffee to 300 grams of water and we'll dial in coffee for the best possible taste. Uh, there are some pieces that are like extremely large, but it's always oh, just very few. Yeah, like yeah, so if the if the majority of the grind size is smaller, then then the big big ones will get uh, under extracted. So just by the look, this is no, of course, like a scientific uh, measurement, but just by the look, this looks definitely the most consistent grind of them all so let's try this uh, this looks uh, slightly muddy you know this is interesting because have a look it's a grind setting five from zero when the birds are touching it under so it's only five clicks which should be like quite fine. And you can see huge boulders, like quite big grind size for French pests. And then you can see the mud in the middle. So this is quite uh, inconsistent grind with a lot of, lot of dust, yeah. So let's try and taste this coffee. So now we're gonna taste the brewed coffee from uh, Hario grinder with the five clicks. There is nice flavor of the coffee, like I can feel the oranges, the caramel, which is kind of like a darkish ca caramel. It's a slightly more bitter, like it's soft, but it's there. And that's from having uh, too much fines in the grind. Also, the acidity, it's quite sharp. It's not bad, it's a good tasting cup, but the acidity is sharp and there is a bitterness in the aftertaste. Okay, so yeah, this is the brew from uh, Timor Grinder. You can get quite a lot from the from the flavor of the coffee. You can feel the florality, the, the caramel. So in terms of drinking, it's a nice cup of coffee. In the aftertaste, it's slightly bitter. As it cools down, the acidity becomes more pronounced. Maybe it's just a slightly sharp, but these differences are so small. But other than that, the cup is nice, it's clean, it uh, has a good body to the coffee. So it's, it's a nice cup of coffee. This brew is very... Uh, uh, very clean, uh, very juicy, like uh, the acidity is very crisp and uh, also there is a nice sweetness to it. I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel any, anything uh, negative about this, like it has a nice body, nice texture, it's very pleasant and there is no harsh acidity or bitterness. It's actually a very good cup, very balanced I would say. In the, in the cheaper grinder today, we could feel the hints of the coffee flavor in terms of the fruitiness, of the sweetness, but they were not so clean. Then when we tasted the medium class grinder, I could feel much more potential of this coffee, the flavor profile and the characteristics. It wasn't muted with the sharp acidity or bitterness. And in the most expensive grinders, you could name the taste descriptors very easily and very precise you know you are sure that you can feel the orange blossom you are sure you can feel caramel because you don't feel any bitterness any sharp acidity covering those flavors so in terms of describing the flavors you can uh, feel these differences all right i hope you get enough insight into the differences between cheap and expensive hand grinders to make up your mind and pick what's best for you. We pick these three hand grinders to represent the specific categories, but you can definitely find good alternatives on the market. Also, I want to mention again that we believe all three grinders are good options for the price you pay. So what is our suggestion? If you watch this video because you already buy and brew specialty coffee, 
I would suggest going for the best possible hand grinder you can afford. It's a big investment first, but from my experience, if coffee becomes your passion, you will get there anyway. So you just skip an extra step and in the long run, you will save money because higher end hand grinders will last longer. There is one exception to that, and that's when you plan on traveling with your hand grinder a lot. Then perhaps you might sacrifice the performance and quality of ground coffee to the portability and lightweight. On the other hand, if you are switching from supermarket coffee or pre-ground coffee to freshly ground coffee, you don't need to spend over 200 euros for a grinder at start. Of course you can and you won't make a mistake, but the biggest difference will be coffee itself anyway. So buy specialty coffee first. Now, let us know what you think. Was this comparison useful? Is there anything else we should cover or explain? Let us know in the comments and if you want to see how some of the hand grinders are made, check out our Comandante factory tour video. Thank you guys for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video very soon. Bye bye.